السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين As we mentioned earlier, that the aim of these three th series, which we have taken one after the other, was to purify our hearts and to get a pure heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with when we meet him. One day, we're all leaving this dunya. Everyone who is born will die. So while we are living in this dunya, we have to get ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will go on a long journey. So we have to get our sustenance. We have to prepare ourselves. If you are blessed to wake up in the morning, to start a new day, then do not spoil, do not spoil it with sins. This new day is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This new day is a guest who will not return. So take advantage, take advantage of this new chance that you have. Use it wisely to rectify your bad deeds. Use it wisely to collect as much good deeds as you can while you still have this chance. So it's a fact that death will knock the door of each and every one of us. Now, actually, I want you to imagine that uh, you are in the place of the famous writer, Abdullah al-Jarullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon his soul. Who wrote the following few words shortly before his death. He said, when I die, uh, now I want you, before I continue, I want you just to imagine that death has knocked your door. And it's time for you to leave this dunya. So now you are saying the words that Abdullah al-Jarullah has just written. So Abdullah said, when I die, I will not worry. And I will not care about my decaying body. Well, our bodies are going to decay in the grave. So he's saying, I will not care about my decaying body. My Muslim brothers will do what's necessary, which is stripe me of my clothes, wash me, shroud me, Take me out of my home. Take me to my new home, to the grave. A lot of people will come to my funeral. And a lot of them will cancel their work, their appointments for the sake of burying me. And a lot of them may have never thought of giving me an advice while I was living in this dunya. My things will be disposed of, my keys, my books, my bags, my shoes, my clothes, and so on. So everything will be disposed of. And if my family is successful, they will give my stuff in charity to benefit me. Be assured 
that the world will not be, be sad for me. The movement of, of the world will, will not stop. The world will go on. Economy will continue. My job will be given to someone else. My money will go lawfully to the hairs. While I am the one who will be held accountable for it. I collected this money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold me accountable. Where did I get this money? How did I spend it? What is left? So I will be accountable for it. The first thing that will be taken away from me when I die is my name. So they will not call me by my name anymore. They will say, where is the body? They will not call me by the name anymore. And when they want to, to pray for me, they will say, uh, bring the funeral for Salat al -Janaza. They say, bring the funeral, bring, bring the body. So they will not call me by my name. And when they start to bury me, they the uh, after preparing the the grave, they will someone will get down into the grave just to receive me. So they will say, uh, "Bring the dead closer and give give the dead to us." And they will not mention my name. So my lineage, my tribe will not benefit me. Nor will my position or fame be of any advantage to me. So it will not benefit anyone if he is a doctor, if he is a president, if he is a, a poor person, if he is a lawyer. Nothing will benefit, will benefit us in this dunya. So how trivial this world is and how great is what we are going to face. He goes on and he says, oh, you who are alive now. So he is talking to the people who are not dead. So so he's he's saying know that sadness over you will be of three types there will some people will 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 be sad so some there is sadness but this sadness is will will, will be of three types the first type is that of people who know you su superficially. So, so these people who know you superficially, they will say, poor man. And your friends will be sad for, for a few days or maybe hours. Then what will happen? They will return to their normal life to their uh, laughter, to their work, and they will soon forget about you. The third part is the part, uh, the type of sadness at, at your home. There will be deep sadness at home. Your family will be sad for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, or even a year. But after that, they will put you in the archive of memories. Your story among people has ended. And your real story, which is the afterlife, has begun. So you've lost beauty, money, 
health, wealth, children, husband, parents, nothing remains with you except your work. You will leave everything behind. You will leave everybody behind. You will be going by yourself. So your real life has begun. Now the question is, what have you prepared for your grave? What have you prepared for your afterlife? What have you prepared for standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is a fact that needs contemplation. There is still chance. We are still alive. So we have to take advantage of this chance. So be careful. Be careful about your hard prayers, about your sunnah prayers, about paying charity, about performing good deeds, about your night prayers. All of these that you have to be careful about, these are what will hopefully save you. Your deeds, your actions. You will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And he will question you. He will ask you. Each and every person on the day of judgment will be given his record. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Munafiqoon, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ So, spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From what we have provided you. مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ Before death approaches one of you. When this happens, what will happen? What he will say? He will say, my Lord, if only you would delay me for a brief time, for a brief term, so I would give charity and be among the righteous. So what was the first action that he would do? He would give charity. فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ so this is the question. Why, why would the dead person choose charity? See, the Muhammad وسلم, talked about charity a lot. And he told us that when we pay charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reimburse us. And there will be multiple folds. So, charity is very important. And one of the rewards of charity is to heal the sick people. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, Dawu mardakum bisadaqa. Treat your sick loved ones by paying sadaqa, by paying money, by paying charity. So why would the deceased person, the dead person, choose charity if he returns to the world? He did not say, Ya Allah, I would perform umrah, or I would pray, or I would read Quran, or I would fast. So why? What is the reason? Why did he choose charity? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
رب لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق So I, if you delay me, then I would give charity. Scholars said that the dead did not mention anything but charity except for the great effect that he saw after his death. So use the chance that you are still alive and give a lot of charity. Get something saved for you on the day of judgment. And remember, death is very close. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised uh, uh, Sayyidina Ibn Amr, Sayyidina Ibn Umar when he, when he said to him, كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر سبيل. So be in the world in in this dunya like a stranger or a traveler. Why these two specifically these two types that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam chose? What would a stranger do? He will not collect this, anything of this trivial dunya. Nor the traveler. When someone travels, he will take essentials with him. He will not take all of his house with him. No, we just have two suitcases that he will take with him while he's traveling. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us this advice. Kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharibun aw abiru sabil. Don't get attached to this dunya. Don't get attached to the adornments of this dunya. Don't get attached to the trivialities in this dunya. So don't compete in this dunya because it's a vanishing dunya. It's a vanishing world. We're running and running and running and running and running in this dunya. But one day we will leave it. We will leave it and go away to the real dunya, to the real, to the real life. This is a vanishing dunya. But the real life is eternal. So Sayyidina Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الصَّبَحِ When you survive till the evening, do not expect to live until the morning. وَإِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاءِ and when you survive till the morning, do not, do not expect to live until the evening. You never know when you will die. You will never know what action you will be doing when you die. وَخُذْ مِنْ صِحَّتِكَ لِمَرَضِكَ so, do good deeds while you, you are in good health, before you fall sick. Do not postpone things. If there is something you have to do today, don't put it off till tomorrow. You are healthy today. You never know what will happen tomorrow. Is there any guarantee that, first of all, we are going to wake up in the morning? Is there any guarantee that we will wake up healthy in the morning? So, So, do good deeds while you are in good health before you fall sick. 
ومن حياتك لموتك Do good, do good deeds as much as you can while you are alive before death strikes. It is said, لا راحة لمؤمن إلا بلقاء ربه. There is no rest for the believer except in meeting his Lord. But when is this meeting? It's not necessary for the meeting to be after death. How? Prayer is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being in zikr gatherings is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sitting alone, talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking for dua, doing whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered you to do, to do when he said, Ud'uni astajib lakum, call me and I will answer your calls. Pray for me and I will answer your prayers. So remembrance of Allah is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Charity is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reciting the Quran is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Night prayers is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Visiting the sick is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the sick person. So when you visit the sick person, you make dua. And Allah inshallah will, will answer your dua. It will be a dua mustajab. So there are many opportunities that we have in this dunya to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before, before the big meeting with him, before the real meeting with him. So when we have a, a new day, when we live a new day, then we have to take advantage of this new day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf in Ayah 110, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا So whoever would hope for the meeting with his Lord, let him do righteous work, righteous deeds, and not associate in the worship of his Lord anyone. So, meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when someone does righteous work. When you do your work purely and just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your intention is 100% for, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing else. It's not for this dunya. We don't do anything just so that people would say, oh, look at this man. Because if this is the case, then... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say on the day, the day of judgment, you worship me so that people will do, will say, look at this man. This is a righteous person. Look at this, his khushu' in the salah. 
while if if someone prays by himself then he will be just doing some physical uh, actions some uh, ups and downs and sittings and some exercise no we have to build a strong relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the aim of all these series the three series that we covered for the past six six months was to prepare the muslim for the day of departure for the day of leaving this dunya was to prepare the muslim for meeting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In fact, these series had a secret about how to strengthen our faith, how to strengthen the bond between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to strengthen the bond between us and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how to strengthen the bond between us and the Holy Quran. The hadith, the seer of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, In the first 12 sessions, we talked about 10 outer actions that would draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and would get us more prepared for the day when we will meet, when we will leave this dunya. So they would draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be considered as an essential guide to improving our relationship with both the creator and the creation. So what did we cover? What did we talk about in these uh, 12 sessions? We, we talked about in these outer actions, we talked about performing prayers, paying zakah, fasting, Performing Hajj, reciting the Quran, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the lawful, upholding the rights of Muslims and con good companionship, commanding good and forbidding evil. And we, we ended up with following the sunnah. Then we moved on to part two, where we talked about some of the blameworthy characteristics that hinder the heart from becoming a sound heart. Because all our focus is on the heart. All our struggle in this dunya is to save our heart. So to have a sound heart that when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be happy with this heart. A heart that will be filled with the love of Allah and will be filled with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would look into this heart, he will find his Habib in this heart. He will find the most beloved of his creatures to his heart in this heart. So these uh, the 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 part two of this these series that we covered. In, the, in this uh, section, we talked about some of the blameworthy characters, characteristics that will hinder the heart from becoming a sound heart. So we talked about overeating and greed for food. We talked about uh, excessive and futile speech, ineffective speech. We talked about anger, we talked about envy, jealousy, stinginess and love for wealth, altness, superiority, 
love for fame, love of the world, pride, arrogance, self uh, admiration, تعجب, ostentation and show, الرياء. We also talked about hurting people and animals. So hurting the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we talked about how each of these character traits had a bad influence on the heart. On the contrary, in part three, we focused on the praiseworthy character traits that would help us have a purified and a sound heart. That would help us preserve our heart. So we basically concentrated on the heart. Why? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala wa inna fil jasadi mudda. Ida saluhat, saluha al jasadu kullu. Wa ida fasadat, fasad al jasadu kullu. Ala wa hiya al qalb. There is a piece of the flesh into the body, in the body. If it becomes great, if it becomes good, if it becomes reformed, if it becomes sound, then the whole body becomes good. But if it gets spoiled, then the whole body gets spoiled. And that is the heart. Ala wahiya al And we mentioned that of these praiseworthy character traits, we mentioned and we focused on repentance, hope, asceticism, self-discipline, self-restraint, patience, gratitude, sincerity and truthfulness, Reliance, love, contentment with divine decree, remembering death, being dutiful to our parents. So in this series, we focused on how we can have a reformed heart, a sound heart, by which we will be saved on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Shu'ara, Ayah 88-89, He said, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ The day that when there will not benefit anyone, anyone. So, so nothing will benefit uh, a person. Wealth or children. No one, nothing will benefit someone on the day of judgment except but only one who comes to Allah with a sound heart. Subhanallah. So, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we ask you. Ya Allah, to guide us. We ask you to guide us to whatever pleases you, Ya Allah. We ask you to guide us to follow the footsteps of our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To make us of the group of people whom Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be proud of on the day of judgment. We ask you, Ya Allah, to be of the group of people about whom you said, Radiyallahu anhum wa radu an. 
Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. We know how, what it means to, to for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with some people, with people. But what does it mean that people are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's people are pleased with the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them. So they forgot all their misery in dunya. They forgot all the hardship that they lived in, they passed in, in this dunya. They will remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be very happy. So, Ya Allah, we ask you to guide us to follow the footsteps of our beloved Rasul, of our beloved Prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, we ask you for maghfira. We are sinners, Ya Allah, but you are the forgiver. You're the most forgiver. So, we ask you for maghfira, ya Allah. We ask you for mercy, ya Allah. You, you created mercy and you divided it to 100 portions. You sent down to earth just one portion. And you kept the 99 portions so that you will have mercy on the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. So we ask you, we thank you, Ya Allah, for making us Muslims. We thank you, Ya Allah, so that we, we love you, Ya Allah. Rabbi ghfirli wa li walidayk. وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ Ya Allah, forgive us. Forgive our parents and all the believers on the Day of Judgment. So we are asking for maghfira for us, for our parents, for all the Muslims who passed away. We ask you, Ya Allah, for forgiveness to all the believers, Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen. Rabbana, Ya Rabbana, Laka Alhamdu Kama Yambaghi Li Jalali Wajhika Wa'adhimi Sultanik. Ya Allah, we thank you. But we don't know how to thank you. Allahumma inna la nuhsi thanaan alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Ya Allah, we don't know how to thank you. We don't know how or what, what type of, what type of thanking that you love. We don't know. You deserve all the hamd. You deserve all the gratitude. And we don't know how to thank you. So we say, Allahumma la na'rifu kayfa nusalli ala Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we send to salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we feel that by looking right and looking left, then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the angel to take our salam, to take our salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly to him, to pass it to him. But did we make this salawat? No. Because what we say, what we are saying, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Ya Allah, you pray upon Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We do not say, Usalli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We do not say, I am happy with TV, with all the, uh, the uh, 
broadcast that's on TV that we want to learn from that. No, we want to be guided by Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want to be guided by the best teacher in this dunya. We want to be guided by the best father in this dunya so we know how to raise our children. Our children are amana with us. We have to take care of this amana. We have to do our best to fulfill our responsibilities towards this amana. We have to pray for our kids. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save them, will protect them against all the fitan that are, that are in this dunya. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on our behalf. So with this, we come to an end to our three series that we have covered under the principles of religion. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us the opportunity to finish, to, to just to go over these uh, uh, things just one by one briefly. Just briefly, we had an idea about each and every one of the of the uh, of the chapters of the titles that we mentioned earlier. So, until we meet in other series, I would send my salam and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send our salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we are expecting the return back to us, which is the, the salawat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels upon us so until we meet in other series I would say Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa an'im wa azim wa karim Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh